Hi, I'm Dr. Philip Macmillan, and um, I'm sharing with you something that is it's extremely important. And I thought about this information for over a year, and I'm kind of now sharing why I think this is important. And I want you most critically to join me with regards to Substack, because that's where I have detailed it in more um, in more detail. So please continue, um, consider joining me on Substack, everything COVID-19, post po podcasts and videos um, since 2020. So I'm talking about ferritin and ferritin is something that is hidden. If you're not in the medical field, you probably wouldn't have think of, thought about it. And quite truthfully, even medics don't think too much about it. It is a, a serum protein and it's related to iron levels in the blood. And we usually use it to look for iron deficiency anemia. It has been found to be elevated in severe COVID-19. And I'm sharing with you this very important point about what should you know about ferritin? And critically, what should you do about this information? And so this is information personal to you, but if there are any clinicians who are watching this, I would encourage them to start looking for this marker for macrophage activation. So I'm sharing about this because I'm calling it the silent inflammatory killer. It's kind of like hypertension, I think, is that hypertension is the silent killer because you get no symptoms until you get a heart attack or a stroke. In the same way, I think that ferritin is a marker for another inflammatory process that puts your body at risk long term. And it's important to know that this is not a risk for every person, but in certain cohorts, I think this is very, very relevant. And my own personal journey with monitoring ferritin and observing it in patients has been over 16 months. And so I've seen it over some time and quite truthfully, nobody really seems too interested, largely because it's a broad tool of measurement. It, it, its elevation can be caused by a number of issues. And so this is why it is not considered as relevant in the context of what does it mean. But I'm highlighting this to you today because I don't want anybody to say they never heard about this. So when my Substack post, and this is where I'd want you to go, because some of the things I say in there, I can't quite say here, to, quite, to be quite frank. And so in there, I am highlighting some principles more critically about this silent macrophage inflammation. And this is the bit about the ferritin, because ferritin is located in three parts of the body, primarily intestines, liver, and macrophages. And essentially, it's these um, immune cells that I think are being persistently activated, which is why ferritin remains elevated in some people. I link you to some papers here about elevated ferritin in severe COVID-19. I mentioned some of my clinical observations, and then I explain a bit more about what I think is happening with regards to the macrophages in terms of uh, COVID-19 and beyond. The important thing is that I also detail in it what I think that an individual can say to their clinician to get this serum um, measurement done. Because you can't just walk into your doctors and say, I want a ferritin. They'll want to know why. And part of what I do is I explain what it is that I think is important about how to say to your GP. So why am I talking about it now? And this is coming up to uh, a bit of information that came out of Singapore. This is a report on excess mortality during the COVID-19 pandemic up to June 2022. Uh, this is from the Ministry of Health Singapore. It was published in 2022. And, and this was critical in my mind. And this is why I decided that I needed to talk about it. Or what they have been finding is that when they look at from 2020 to 2022, you can see this trend in terms of a monthly total number of resident deaths. And there is a gradual increase from 2020 all the way up 
to 2022. There are some peaks in, in early March and in November, but the overall trend is continuing to rise. Now, when I saw that, I thought that was important. And I thought that this could be an indicator of the point that I'm mentioning about macrophage activation and ferritin. And this is what I deal, detail some more. It's the ferritin, uh, because it's concentrated in macrophages, if there is no associated inflammation, what can then happen is that it suggests that these little blue dots I've put as ferritin are being released from all these macrophages. And these macrophages are in an active state, an inflamed state, and they can cause damage to the rest of the body. Going back to the details from Singapore, what we can see here is that in their age groups between, this is 2016 to 2021 here, and what you can see is that there's a progressive, um, well, there's increased numbers of death by age group. But if you look at the 80 plus here, in 2021, it was much higher even than 2020 and in 2019. So even though we have implemented mitigation strategies, our excess deaths or deaths still seems to be quite high. Now, it's important to put into context that many people will say that the excess deaths would have been even higher if we didn't have mitigation strategies across the world. And that can be argued to some degree, but in, in some senses, um, there is a, a point that you can say that, how do we actually know? There's a particular statement that was made in the Singapore document, and this is what I want to highlight here. So what they've said is that they have noticed that there is, a, they're looking for an explanation for death due to underlying medical conditions, but made worse by COVID-19 infections. The gap between official death toll and estimated excess deaths can be explained by deaths in patients recently infected with COVID-19 in the past 90 days. When they looked at persons without recent infect infection, no additional excess death was found. So this is why I thought that I need to come and say something here, because this fits right in to the autoimmune processes that I have been looking at for some time. Ferritin being elevated, I have observed, seems to be associated with higher risk of poor outcomes in patients. But that's just anecdotal. It needs to be researched. But there doesn't seem to be enough of an appetite for ferritin research because it's so broad and many things can affect the levels. However, my point is, is that if it is elevated without any other inflammatory process going on, I think that that is a red flag and we need to understand why it is occurring. And so this is the primary reason why I think that the data coming out of Singapore was so valuable. You can look at causes of death, and I'll show you this here again, um, between 2021 and 2022. In 2020, a primary cause of death here were cancers. It was the same in 2022. Heart disease remained about the same. Pneumonia remained about the same. And strokes remained about the same between the periods of time. What seems to have changed in position is the hypertensive disease and hypertensive heart disease. And you can see that that's going up in from uh, seventh place to sixth place. And the reason for this rise is not quite clear. And um, when we look at some of the kidney disease that has actually come down, and you have in the mix here, you have COVID-19, which is in the middle of everything that we have. So there is a mix that is going on. But my research into autoimmunity and COVID-19 suggests that ferritin could be a very simple test that could be used to help risk stratify who is possibly at risk for poor outcomes. And that's really why I am highlighting this point. As I mentioned in my Substack post here, um, I am highlighting those points with regards to really, how do you discuss ferritin with your doctor? 
who may not even be aware about this, but you can have that discussion in an educated way. It's an extremely simple test. Most people wouldn't mind doing it, and it would serve as a baseline for you and for your loved ones. So please, if you want to learn more, click on the description below, and I'll be happy to share more thoughts with you and over the next period of time. So I hope this has been valuable and I look forward to sharing more information with you in the near future. Please continue to look out for my Substack.